Hello everyone, today we're gonna go over Ninaka Takiwa from the second row of the side story Magical Girls, so let's get started. Nanaka Takiwa is a 15-year-old magical girl. She is 160 centimeters in height, her hair and eye color are magenta, and she comes from a your ward in Kamehama City. Her soul gem is a hot pink oval located as a flower ornament in her hair on the right side. Her weapon is katanas, the two stores sword style. Katanas are a type of Japanese sword. Nanaka's wish was that she had the power to accomplish revenge by her own hands. The power to accomplish my revenge by my own hand. Her rich and doppel is Mara. She attends St. Yorin Educational Academy in the ninth grade. Her magical element is the water element and her ability is to identify true enemies. Magical girl from the head family, Kashin Ryu, a school of flower arranging started in the Endo period from 1603 to 1868. Beautiful and incomparable, she appears to be innocent, but she is acting actually a wise straighteners able to read any situation she has to put into ease. The doppel of two sides, its form is a shop curtain. The doppel reflects two sides of the same coin. The master of this emotion feels guilty in some way about the lack of floral elements in her doppel. Its front side primarily supports its allies, while its back side offensive powers are high. It is skilled at preying enemy attacks and it is guides any souls who have passed through this curtains into the underworld. Nanaka meets with three magical girls, Mei Yi Chan, Akria Shinobu, and Kako Natsume, in order to ask for their help fighting a wish they have all have a connection to. This explained Nanaka tells them how she became a magical girl. Nanaka's father was the head of a Japanese flower arranging school with a long history. When he fell ill, the head students took over the school. Although the school became more popular, the new readers turned their back on the school's t traditions and completely shut down Nanaka's father and his family. On his deathbed, Nanaka's father tells her to take back the school. After his death, she sends to send to live with relatives and is visited by Kube. She accepts his contract and wishes for the power to exact her family's revenge on her by her own hand. Back in the presence, she explains to the other magical girls that her wish-driven magic is known to know who her enemy is. The ability made her realize that the target of her revenge was not a student, but a witch. Nanaka compares this witch to a locust swarm. Just as a locust swarm settles down into one era to devour everything before moving on, this witch causes as many calamities as possible for men getting to a new location. Nanaka explains that the witch controls the current head of her father's school via a witch's kiss. She also says the witch is behind several incidences where people in Kamehama have been forced to sell their land, something Miyu is connected to. It also is the reason why Kako's bookstore burned down, leading to Kako con contracting. As for Akira, she met Nanaka when they were fighting one of the witch's familiars. Akira and Kako quickly agree to help Nanaka fight the witch. Miho also agrees to help, but says that as a member of the 
Seikai, she can't follow Nanaka's orders. Nanaka is fine with this, claiming as long as the witch is defeated, the details are unimportant. Nanaka's plan is to have the team to investigate suspicious areas until they find the witch's barrier, whereupon they would come together to destroy the witch. The magical girls agree to this plan. Later, the magical girls are able to track down the and defeat the witch. Mihahu is impressed by how Nanaka acted during the battle. Rather than give Mihahu orders, she reacted to Mihahu's actions. Mihahu explains that she now accepts Nanaka as a leader. However, Nanaka explains it's not over yet, as he turns out that the witch they defeated only had a copy of the original created from a fully grown familiar. The magic girls resolve to continue their hunt. Afterward, Nanaka speaks with Kyube about a secret she learned after becoming Magical Girl. In the past, Nanaka came across another soul gem while chasing after a familiar. Picking it up for safekeeping, she then came across the seemingly dead body of a girl. Nanaka distributes that this was the Magical Girl who lost the soul gem and that she was attacked by a familiar before she could transform. Nanaka describes the proper then thing to do this to lay the soul gem with its owner's body. When, she's, when pl she places the soul gem in the magical girl's hands, Nanaka is shocked to hear her start breathing. The other magical girl is in play to be Ik Akira. Later, Kyube explains to Nanaka how soul gems are, are the distracted souls of a magical girl. Back in the present, Nanaka and Kyuubi remember how Nanaka quickly accepted Kyuubi's explanation for the sake of her revenge. Kyuubi asks if she will tell the other magical girls about the Soul Gym's secret. Nanaka says she is waiting for the right moment. Then Nanaka thinks about her true revenge target, Kyuubi. Well, she doesn't know all the details, her power makes it clear that Kyuubi is an enemy. She is currently waiting for the right time to turn against him. In the final part, Nanaka's team is unable to find the witch. However, Akira says she met a magical girl mercenary. As the girls plan their next course of action, Nanaka muses about how she is gathering the determination of magical girls, waiting for the right moment. Nanaka's wish granted magic is the ability to know who her enemy is. She claims that this was because she wasn't quite certain who she needed to take revenge against. Although compared to her radar, this do power does not seem to give location. Merely identity, this power gave her to knowledge that the source of her family's troubles was a witch. It also showed that Kyube was an enemy as well. Though this knowledge appears to have come after she learned about how soul gems are actually souls. As shown in the cross connection event, Nanaka's wish also allows her to sense problems or pro people related to either a witch or her vengeance towards them, when no similar related problems rear their heads. Whatever it's linked to my revenge, this includes anything that gets in the of my way. Allowing her to sense that Suzumi Amano was both untrustworthy and a magical girl. Nanaka's last name, Takiwa, means permanent. Her first name, Nanaka, means vegetables, greens, but can also mean with Kai, flower meaning summer, meaning fragrance, or meaning day, sun in Japan. Other kanji combinations are possible as well. It's like putting all of her means to that her name comes out like this. Vengeance, greens, flower, summer, fragrance, day, sun. Fact 1, her illustrator is Hayami Chika. Fact 2, her magical girl form seems to be based off of Japanese culture, as it resembles a modified kimono. 
Mora is a female given name, but it may be a transposition of a Japanese word literally meaning completely opposite side. Fact 4. Nanaka's VA is Mao Ichinichi, who voice roles you may know from as My Dakota from Death Parade, Mikoto Sekirakara in Gonna Be the Twin Tail, Enri Emmott in Overlord, Yori Wakasa in School Life, and just for one live actor you may know for also as being the Yellow Sentai, Luka Miffy, Yokai, Gokai Yellow. From Gaikozu Sentai Gokagar. On the other end, she has an English VA who voices her in episode 6 of season 1 of the Magi Record anime English dub. That being Justine Hexler, who voiced it say the Synthesis 12 in Sword Art Online Alizization. Chris Kuroda in Blade Blade Burst Tur Turbo, Constance Pickering in Harry Potter Wizards Unite, which I do have the app and very careful with playing it even if I don't do it that often on times and all that stuff, sort of like Futaba Sakura sometimes. I didn't know that she voiced it in this game until looking for the voice roles for this video. But she also voiced it She Lays Me Cutty in Kippo and the Age of the Wildebeest, Wonder Beast. And that's all the roles I'm gonna mention on her that she played besides Nanaka because I don't want to make this along, which I'm probably already doing right now. Well, this is the ending. Thank you for you going into the information and letting me explain Nanaka Tikiwa to you on the Magical Girls Explain. Next time we'll be talking about Amire Katazaki. See you next time everyone.